This portion of the news brought to you by McDonald's. McDonald's, I'm loving it. A difficult situation ahead for the government as it moves toward the country's midterm budget. Prime Minister Perry Christie told reporters outside of Cabinet this morning that the midterm budget address will provide a clear position on what's happening in the economy, particularly at a time when 30,000 persons are unemployed and as the government seeks out ways to grow the economy. Mr. Christie says he's also hoping to see significant progress in the investment area, which will hopefully generate employment. But the Prime Minister wouldn't say just how much money the government is prepared to borrow. We will give a very frank assessment um, of the economy, um, of the weaknesses in the economy, um, of the efforts we have to make to stabilize the economy and most certainly to affect um, savings um, and to curtail expenditure and to try to improve and increase revenue. So essentially, we're going to give a report, a midterm report, that will allow Bahamians to truly understand the extent to which um, we are really um, grappling with some issues in our economy. The Prime Minister also talked about a government meeting on the state of the Bahamas Telecommunications Company. The meeting comes on the heels of last week's announcement that Cable & Wireless Chairman for the Bahamas, David Shaw, was stepping down. Mr. Christie says the news renews the need for the negotiating team to resume planning its strategy to return the majority share in BTC to the government. I was able to speak, um, I think, as clearly to them as I could. Um, and, and I don't think um, a statement that you, the BTC was a horrendously bad deal from the chairman could remain unnoticed um, and unmentioned um, and because it really, you know, those kinds of statements require um, action. And so um, um, they are fully aware now of what my position is on the matter. Uh, hopefully, they will communicate that to cable and wireless, um, and to the BDC board, uh, so that we can move forward. My job is not to destabilize that company, but to work towards the end I would wish to achieve, but at the same time to ensure that I take responsible actions um, as Prime Minister to enable them to do the best they can to continue to um, make money. Mr. It's news that gripped global headlines Monday morning. Pope Benedict XVI's announcement that he intends to resign from the office of Pope. Jiminita Swain has reaction from the leader of the local Catholic diocese as the news sent shockwaves throughout the local Catholic community. It's something that's not happened for at least 600 years. A Pope resigning. Pope Benedict XVI is the first pope to do so since the Middle Ages. He intends to remain in office until February 28. He told a meeting of cardinals that he was stepping down because he was too weak to fulfill his duties. Head of the Catholic Diocese, Archbishop Patrick Pinder, says the news is shocking and sad, but not without a lesson. And so he's using this moment to actually teach the church that certainly it is uh, possible for the pontiff to resign and he has stated in the official announcement that was released today, the declaration released today, that he no longer feels he has the physical stamina to carry on the office, although I still believe he has the mental stamina to do so. But he no longer has the, he, in his view, it requires both physical and mental stamina to do so and he feels he no longer has the physical stamina. Archbishop Pinder says Pope Benedict was the first pope he had the pleasure of meeting in 2008 when he traveled to Rome for the Ad Lima, a meeting every five years for the Archbishop to report on the affairs of the diocese. Archbishop Pinder wore a pectoral cross, a gift from Pope Benedict. He explains that once the pope leaves office, the process for his replacement will commence. According to the established norms of the Constitution for the election of a pope, the cardinals will be gathered to Rome and all those who are eligible electors, that is, the members of the College of Cardinals beneath the, the age of 80, will go into conclave for the election of the next Pope. And that takes place by the one who receives, the, the first to receive uh, um, two-thirds of the vote of the eligible electors among the College of Cardinals. 
Although many persons we spoke to agreed with the decision, Governor General Sir Arthur Folk says he was stunned by the news, but he accepts that the decision is one carefully thought out by Pope Benedict. Administering uh, the church today is a far more complex job than it was in years past. So I think he took all that into consideration and considered his, uh, his you know, d declining years and decided to slap down. Um, it's not often that people in powerful positions do that eh? <laughs> when they don't have to and <laughs> not even expected to. So I wish him well. I think all the people around the world, Christ Catholics, uh, Christians, even non-Christians, will wish um, the Holy Father all the best in his retirement. Archbishop Pinder says Pope Benedict would have warmed the hearts of many during his eight years in office. But the greatest lesson he takes away is that the office of Pope is not just about power, but about ministry and service as well. Jiminita Swain, ZNS Network News. Well, by the end of the first quarter, the Utilities Regulation and Competition Authority intends to launch its consultation on a set of clear consumer protection measures, which we told you about yesterday. Urca says the new measures will ensure that a clear set of rules and regulations are in place to govern service providers like Cable Bahamas and the Bahamas Telecommunications Company. It will also ensure that those companies treat their customers right. A snapshot of some of the issues to be addressed in this initiative includes customer contracts and sales issues, fault repair and service interruptions, truthfulness in advertising, minimum standards of service and customer compensation requirements, billing, credit and debt management, which will include things such as the format of bills, accuracy of charges, timelines for issuance of bills, payment terms, restrictions on suspension and disconnection of service for non-payment, protection of customer information and issues regarding the consumer's obligations to the service provider. Director of Policy and Regulation Stephen Barrow says IRCA intends to conduct its consultation on this initiative in the widest possible manner. He says a set of quality of service standards will also be introduced during this year. This will put in place standards for matters such as network availability, network throughput, call completion, call drop rates, and which will be included on a network-wide basis. ERCO in this case will be putting in place standards which must be complied with by the operators, failing which sanctions may be imposed by ERCO. And also we will require the publication of these statistics for each network operator so that consumers will be aware of the quality of the network performance by each operator on an ongoing basis. All right, in other news, the official holiday for lovers is just around the corner. And tonight, this one's for the ladies. Yes, it is. While you await those bouquets and perhaps a surprise dinner, don't forget the feature of the night, you. Today, I set out to find the look that will help you remain the center of attention. Roses are red and chocolates are dandy, but this Valentine's Day, what about a little eye candy? The lips is where it's at for Valentine's Day, we know that. Now the apple of his eye doesn't have to be red. Eye candy proprietor Italia Williams says, have fun with it. I want the women to know that they don't have to be restricted to, by color. Um, yes, red is the, you know, the color for Valentine's Day, but you can go with a nice beautiful hot pink, like our model is wearing today, or you can go with the red, the classic red, or maybe even a, a shade of orange, or pretty much however you feel for Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day is just two days away. I thought I'd get the jump on my Valentine's Day look. Now they say the eyes are the windows to the soul. What should your eyes be saying on Valentine's Day, or more importantly, Valentine's night? Well, on Valentine's night, your eyes should be saying one of two things. I am dangerously yours, or I am your love angel. Now, to achieve that I am dangerously yours look, you wanna go with smoky look, a smoky look over the eyes, smoky browns, blacks, blues over the eyes. For that I am your love angel look, you wanna go with softer colors over the eyes, soft pinks, reds, um, soft colors, and um, soft cheeks, and definitely you wanna play up the lips. Now you've been working on me for a couple of minutes, what are my eyes saying now? Oh, your eyes are saying, I am your love angel. So, what do you think? So follow these simple instructions and come Valentine's Day, all eyes will be on you.
Alright, so which yep. one are you going to go with? Dangerous I don't know, I'm still making up my mind. I have a couple of days. And, and guys, we haven't left you. Are you going to do something yeah. for the guys? Yeah, tomorrow, I'll have something right? for them tomorrow, so be sure and stay tuned for that. Alright. All up next in sports, a sad day in the track and field arena. We'll explain. McDonald's. McDonald's. I'm loving it.